Imagine you're flying into space in a spaceship. You're thousands of kilometers away from Earth, completely cut off from everything and left to your own devices. All of a sudden, you can hear a huge bash gliding through space, or hear strange music that shouldn't even exist. How would you feel all alone out there? Today, we share nine statements of astronauts with you, which are really creepy. Maurice Shetland. Maurice Shetland claimed to have held a senior position at NASA. During his active time, Shetland claims to have known of so many events and sightings involving aliens and spaceships that he was convinced they are in our midst, they are watching us, and they have always been on Earth. Shetland published a number of books after his retirement that focused in particular on what influences extraterrestrials have had on the emergence of human culture and possibly on the emergence of the human race. Shetland also claimed, for example, that censored NASA film footage showed two UFOs hovering over astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin when they were the first humans to set foot on the moon. Some pictures appeared in People magazine in June 1975 to confirm this and were confirmed by Maurice Shatlin. Minutes after Armstrong stepped on the lunar surface, Armstrong is said to have sent this radio message, also censored. Those parts were really tremendous, sir. Oh God, you wouldn't believe it if I told them. There were other spacecraft here, and they've now gathered at the other end of the crater and are watching us. NASA denies these observations around the moon landing to this day, and even says Maurice Shatlin was never a member of NASA, but just a meaningless engineer at a subcontractor. Apollo 15 Supposedly, it's completely silent in space. Almost anyway. The vacuum is hardly able to conduct sound. Now, a vacuum is never completely empty, even in space, and so certain waves travel from distant places in space to us. These sound events, which are picked up, for example, also by our terrestrial radio telescopes, move in frequency ranges, which are not audible to the human ear. Nevertheless, some astronauts on the Apollo missions reported hearing strange sounds in space that sounded like hissing. One Apollo 10 astronauts called this phenomenon space music. At NASA, the official word was that the noises were most likely coming from a fault in the radios. But Al Warden, an astronaut from the Apollo 15 mission, disagreed with this explanation. He said that he was sure these noises came from outside and not through the radio system. Dr. Musgrave Dr. Musgrave is considered by experts to be the professor in space. Before and after him, never again such an educated and highly distinguished man has flown into space. Musgrave went to space six times. During Apollo 15 in particular, the man, who holds university degrees in six different disciplines, made a peculiar observation. Outside the windows of the space shuttle, a white flap about three meters long floated through space. Back on Earth, NASA claimed Musgrave saw a piece that probably separated from the space capsule or came from the rocket. But Musgrave did not believe this and should be right because the same part saw the exceptional astronaut again. Only the snake was with the second sighting at about six to eight meters substantially larger. Dr. Musgrave claimed in numerous reports and interviews following his active career with NASA, this is extraterrestrial life. These are civilizations that are much more advanced than we are. They've also been coming to Earth for at least 100 million years, and we can't begin to imagine how advanced these creatures really are. I am making an effort to communicate with them. I know the probabilities are close to zero, but I tell them to come down and get me. Let's hope that Musgrave may one day be heard, and we will finally get definite proof of the existence of aliens. Yang Liwei As we have already illuminated, there is supposedly no direct sound transmission in space. Any astronaut who has been in the cosmos can confirm this. Even on the ISS, astronauts can only communicate with the help of technical aids. They have to make their voices audible in the vacuum of space 
with headsets and special radios. These voice signals must be spoken directly into the transformer, which converts the voice into an electrical code and outputs it as audible sound at the other end. As soon as an astronaut is too far away from the intercom, his voice gets lost in the void. So, how can it be then that Chinese astronaut Yang Liwei heard it? When he went into space in 2005, he heard a sound that sounded like someone hitting an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. As if that wasn't strange enough, six other Chinese astronauts who were in space between 2005 and 2008 also heard exactly this sound, which no one can explain. Alan Bean Alan Bean was an astronaut who was in space with the second moon mission in 1969. On board of the Apollo 12, he flew, among other things, as a helmsman of the landing capsule to the Earth satellite. Bean's mission on the lunar surface consisted mainly of installing scientific facilities. To this end, he undertook two spacewalks that lasted a total of more than seven hours. His missions took him near Oceanus Procellarum, a large lava-flooded area known as the Ocean of Storms. The Apollo 12 mission's landing site was near the Surveyor 3 crater. On the path, several hundred meters away, Bean noticed a peculiar shiny object. He reported his observation, but experts commented on the observation that it could be optical illusions, reflections, or even perpetual errors caused by the unusual environment. On Earth, we also know the phenomenon of moonlight or Earth shine. In these phenomena, sunlight is reflected from the Earth to the lunar surface, producing a faint, diffused light on the surface of the Moon. Another phenomenon that can explain a luminous appearance on the Moon are special types of rocks and minerals with reflective properties. These are rather rare on the Moon, but it cannot be ruled out that Alan Bean saw a major accumulation of feldspar, which can glitter or glow when irradiated with sunlight. James McDivitt and Ed White James McDivitt and Ed White were NASA astronauts and members of the Gemini 4 mission in 1965. During their spaceflight, they encountered something that has since been listed by NASA as an unidentified flying object. During the Gemini 4 mission, McDivitt and White performed the first U.S. space egress. On June 3, 1965, while the space capsule of the two astronauts was over Hawaii, they saw a strange object. The brightly glowing thing, reportedly measured about 30 to 45 meters, was cylindrical in shape and rotated or wobbled slightly. McDivitt reported the incident to ground control and took photos of the unusual sighting. Only later was it clear that the photos had become blurred and did not provide clear views of the object. The incident led to massive speculation and debate among scientists and the general public. In the run-up to the Apollo missions, some people pondered whether it would really be safe and responsible for humans to fly into space when there were unknown flying objects. NASA investigated the incident and then closed the case, saying that no definitive explanation for the sighting could be found. Objects that NASA considers unidentified are thereby not clearly of extraterrestrial origin or spacecraft. At NASA, despite the frequent sightings of such objects and all the experiences we share with you here, they continue to drive the course that there are perfectly normal explanations for most incidents. McDivitt and White took a less rational view of their sighting. They were certain that what they saw had not been of terrestrial origin, but the two men could only speculate about the rest. In one of his many interviews, McDivitt said, it's hard to talk about what is simply incomprehensible. Leroy Chow Leroy Chow is a former NASA astronaut who made several space flights and commanded a mission to the International Space Station, or ISS. Chow participated in congresses of paranormal phenomena and the sighting of UFOs, as well as aliens several times after his active time at NASA. During an interview at the Extraordinary Phenomena Conference, he said, I saw a strange, unknown being at the ISS. It was floating, 
almost transparent, and had arms or tentacles. Zhao further stated that this being had been sitting in a vehicle that resembled an inverted V and had strings of lights. This statement came from Zhao personally and was never officially confirmed by NASA. NASA did not comment on whether Zhao had reported his observations and whether they had been investigated at all. Edgar Mitchell Astronaut Edgar Mitchell is best known today for being involved in the rescue of the history-making Apollo 13 mission. But Mitchell was not only one of the heroes of the exceptional moon flight, he also had his own opinion about extraterrestrials. He unabashedly claimed that high-ranking military officials had hidden evidence of UFOs and were keeping it under wraps. Mitchell grew up in New Mexico very close to the White Sands testing range of the U.S. Army and had seen flying saucers there constantly since he was a child. In addition, he indicated in an interview that he knows that extraterrestrials manipulated nuclear weapons so that mankind does not destroy itself this way. Well, let's say a big thank you to the aliens then. Chris Hadfield Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield made comments ahead of a U.S. government report of unidentified aerial phenomena saying, I've seen countless things in the sky that I don't understand. The former astronaut was a commander of the International Space Station and long served as a fighter pilot in the Canadian Air Force before his career in space. But Hatfield thinks it's premature, if not stupid, for people to immediately think of UFOs or aliens based on such sightings. He is almost certain that extraterrestrial life exists somewhere in space, but notes that we humans should get serious about searching for possible other life forms instead of bringing wild speculation into the world. What's your take on this? Do you think these statements and sightings speak a clear language? Or is there room for completely different interpretations here? <laughs>